want to talk to you about ports, pollution, policy, and breast cancer prevention. We want to start with the fact that California has some of the largest ports in the country. And as you can see from the slide, there are numerous smaller ports as well. And while these ports provide great economic engine for our state, they also are a significant source of pollution, air pollution in particular. And a lot of that comes from diesel exhaust. We know diesel exhaust is a carcinogen, and we know one element of it is a class of chemicals called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs. And the PAHs have been linked to uh, increase in breast cancer. And of course, the communities, not surprisingly, that are most impacted by this, the communities that live around the ports, tend to be low-income communities and communities of color. So this is an important environmental justice issue. The good news is that those communities are fighting back. And they are pushing decision makers to implement policies that would reduce those emissions, policies and specific interventions. So what we want to do is take a look at those interventions to see which have been the most effective, not only in reducing air emissions, which has been looked at, but the body burden of breast carcinogens in those communities so that we can determine what are the most effective. So we want to biomonitor those, those communities to look at that. So what we would do is start by finding a community partner. This study cannot be done without working with the communities that are already engaged in trying to reduce these emissions. And they need to be part of that process from design to implementation to dissemination of those studies in a true collaboration. We also need to identify uh, upcoming interventions. And those interventions can be anything from prohibiting trucks from idling in the ports to investing in upgrading dirty diesel engines and trucks to cleaner technology to looking at the equipment that transports cargo within the ports, so cranes and forklifts, and upgrading those to cleaner technology as well. So once we have the community and the intervention, we would recruit community members at various distances from the port who are willing to be biomonitored. And then we would take blood and urine samples both before the intervention and at a couple of intervals after the intervention, determined by however the, the study design comes together. We would also look at air emissions data, and we would take surveys of those individuals so we can look at some other variables. Once we have those samples, we would test them for breast carcinogens. I mentioned PAHs as a, as a primary focus, but there are a number of other breast carcinogens, like heavy metals, phthalates, dioxin, that can be associated with um, diesel exhaust, so we would look at all of those. But we would also look at what's called PA, PAH adducts. An addict is when a PAH attaches to DNA, and it is considered a precursor or a better indication of increased breast cancer risk than simply looking at exposure. So that would be an important piece of how we would look at this. And what that would tell us is, if we could compare different interventions, we could see which intervention are the most effective, again, not just at air emissions reductions, but specifically body burdens of these chemicals and these precursors to breast cancer. And then we could use that information to focus our advocacy efforts and the advocacy efforts of the communities on the most effective intervention so we can spend our limited resources in the most effective way. California is the perfect place to do this. We have enormous ports, and a lot of them. We have communities that are sophisticated and motivated to make changes to the policies within these ports and get these interventions put together or implemented. We have researchers that are very, very good at collaborating with local communities. And that's a really important piece and something I think fairly unique to California. And we have a top-notch biomonitoring program in the state. We have, one of the, we have the best state program anywhere in the country. And we can use those resources to get some answers about what works best and then to focus those resources that we have to further reduce these emissions and these breast cancer risks for communities living around those ports. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. You clearly have some fans.
I brought them with me. <laughs> I paid them to be here. <laughs> Good job, good job. Uh, uh, judges, do we have any questions for Nancy about her? Wow, no questions. Da oh, ooh. Thank you, Nancy. I was just wondering if um, anyone has looked at incidence of breast cancer in areas you know, around ports versus areas that don't have ports. Um, I actually think there may be um, some increased incidence of breast cancer along the coasts. So that kind of makes sense, but I'm not sure that that's correct. So I was wondering if there's any preliminary evidence in, in that ecological evidence that this may uh, have an impact. Um, thank you. So part of the challenge with looking at breast cancer incidence is the data has to be so finely tuned to be able to look specifically around the ports, because they're, you know, like if you looked at Oakland, that wouldn't tell you necessarily about West Oakland. So I think it's really hard to look at that. And, you know, the coastal impact could be as much economic as it could be around the ports. Um, but we do know that there are a lot of health issues close to the ports, and the communities there are very concerned about those those health impacts and are looking for more information around health, health surveys to show whether the interventions they have worked on have been really helpful. And I, this is not quite a health survey because it would take too long to know whether um, within you know the three or four years we would look at, but it certainly is a step in that direction. Yes. Sure. So the, the question was, so it's on the live stream, the question was, is this going to be uh, aimed at younger women, or is it going to be aimed at adult women that are in the age group that cancer, breast cancer starts to show up? Um, I think we hadn't focused one way or the other on that. Um, I think certainly we would want a mix of ages in the, in the sample sizes. Um, so obviously young women the, have a greater risk for those exposures, so it would be particularly um, important to know whether women, you know, we heard about pr um, pu puberty as a high risk time, so we would certainly want to, um, as we did the selection, look at um, a good mix, but to have a, a high sample size for young women. Well, thank you so much.